Hey everyone, this week we're interviewing Bowen Fay. He's a chemical engineering graduate that went straight into tech sales. You may notice I'm not in my normal background. I'm actually visiting some family right now and getting done with a training run. I have a marathon, my first ever coming up. So um, really appreciate the support again. We're coming up quickly on 500 subscribers and more details to come, uh, but I've actually helped a lot of you through the channel break into tech sales. And I actually, because I'm still working a full-time job doing this as well, I just don't have time to coach everyone. So we're coming out with a course. Stay tuned, more details to come. And again, appreciate the support. Here's our interview with Bowen Fay. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. If you're watching today, I wanted to bring on another engineer that we worked with that transitioned over to tech sales. So Bowen Fay uh, was a chemical engineering student, transitioned to technical sales as well obviously something that we've talked about in our own journeys that aligned well, but I'll kick it over to Ian and Bowen. Um, just to give you an overview, the point of these videos again is to just, I, I know when I look back at my own experience going from engineering to tech sales, I probably overthought a lot of it, but just hearing someone else's thought process would have helped me a lot as well. So with that, Ian, Bowen, uh, thanks for joining and uh, Ian, I'll kick it to you. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I guess, Bowen, a couple, couple of questions, but I'll start with one. Um, we both had a pretty similar background, right? Studied engineering in college. Um, looks like you had a couple of internships within engineering as well. And then, you know, just decided from there post-college, you're going to go straight into sales. I guess, could you like lead us through, you know, your thought process there? Did you entertain working in engineering post-college at all once you made that decision and just more of what that looked like? Yeah, man. Um, that's a great question. And I guess it kind of boils down to people get into sales for different reasons. Um, I've heard a lot that you know, people never really expect to be a salesperson, but I feel like for people who are watching this video or the people on this call, we kind of, you know, went into it knowing like we want to do sales, right? Um, for me, it kind of boiled down to a couple of things. Um, after I did engineering, I kind of realized like, wow, engineers really don't get the glory. <laughs> we do like important work, but we're kind of like treated as an afterthought or either, you know, like a cost center or something. And we never really get rewarded on how good we do it becomes more so that like it's political, even if you do great work, you know, you could almost like never be promoted, right? So I kind of, my my shift was first, I wanted to be recognized for my results, you know, something concrete, or it's like, you know, if I could do good at this job, I can do good financially. Um, and yeah, that's what kind of really boiled down to, that was my shift. Um, you know, I did a lot of engineering jobs or internships while I was in college. I did like plant engineering, building engineering, ship engineering. I was uh, kind of all over the place, but that's kind of what led me to tech sales after school. I did a bunch of stuff in engineering, realized it wasn't uh, all that great. <laughs> Got it. So a lot of it was more of just that kind of like you mentioned, A, not really enjoying engineering as a whole as much, and then B, you know, with sales, kind of double-edged sword, but you get performance-based pay, right? Is, mm -hmm. is that fair right. to assume or is there a little bit more to it than that? No, I'd say that's the biggest part. Definitely, definitely like a meritocracy is how I would put it. You know, if you do good, you get paid, right? You know, I, f I feel like that's much more fair than, you know, like, I don't know, anything else. Yeah, I'm curious. So I know you mentioned some of the realizations you had, like, uh, I always like the context or like, not if there was any ones, maybe there's a specific moment, but like, as you're doing these internships, maybe you're just getting perspective in your chemical engineering classes. Like for me, ultimately, I just realized like I didn't really care enough about engineering to want to be like really, really good at it. Um, I'm curious in your perspective, did you enjoy engineering and or was it more the realization to your point of just being that much more motivated by income potential based on your efforts? Like, I, I guess, walk me through that kind of thought process, how it evolved, right? Yeah, man, I, I definitely enjoyed engineering. Um, engineering was super fun. <laughs> but yeah, definitely like, like, you know, like, um, I think one person put it pretty well. If I'm going to do a job for two, three decades in my life, I'm going to be paid well for it, you know? Right. Like engineering, there's that ceiling, unless you move up to management or, or what, what have you, like, if you stick in engineering, like there's always going to be that ceiling. You're going to top out somewhere, but in sales, it's not like that. Now that you're in the role a little bit too, uh, I, I guess, had you prior to getting into sales as an SDR, like any exposure to any type of sales, whether it's cold calling, door knocking, anything like that? Or No, dude, I was basically brand new to sales. I had a short stint doing like mar marketing, right? For my school. <laughs> yeah, it was nothing like um, what I learned on the job in tech sales. Um, yeah. The velocity and speed and like time management 
um, you have to, you know, put in to be successful at the job is, is a lot more work than people think. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Is there anything in particular too, like from a skill set perspective, like both good or maybe easy and hard, like what did you find your background alluded well to? And then what did you find like particularly difficult? Yeah, so my my vertical, I guess, um, I do cloud networking. So definitely the technical aspect of being able to understand like the technical parts of the conversation, right? Like, you know, the SDRs don't really need to be technical, but knowing the technical parts really makes you more confident. Um, if a prospect asks you some question and then you can always say like, oh, I'm not really the technical guy. Let me get you on the call, right? But if you can't answer that question, dude, that just nails them, you know? Like, they'll be that much more um, invested in you, I guess I would say. Like, they, you, you gain a lot more credibility if you can just be very, you know, spot on with what value you're bringing to the table. And I think that's helped me the most. Also just being process oriented as a lot of engineers are. You know, the benefits, I think something we've talked about quite a bit in terms of grasping the tech, you know, as an engineering person going into sales, typically far easier, right? Working a process and optimizing the process really well, especially as engineering people, we're incredibly efficient, right? So that's definitely a big plus. Um, I guess question to you, like, you know, knowing that you've kind of been in, in the role and in a couple of roles for like five months at this point, what have you found to be difficult in transitioning? What's really difficult for me, and I don't know if this applies to engineering people as a whole, um, is like perfectionism, I guess. And this isn't like to like a subtle brag, like literally, like you cannot try to make everything perfect, right? Like perfectionism is procrastination in sales in my opinion. And that's what I did for the first couple of months, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna make the best email. Like, I'm gonna customize it so hard to this guy and I'll spend like two hours doing that. And then like this dude opened it once and probably like blocked me or something. You know, like, like there's the bell curve, <laughs> the balance between customizing and the volume, right? And I feel like that's important to understand. Got it. So also, I mean, having been in it, the time you've been in it now, you're kind of starting to get at the tail end of the honeymoon phase, if you will, where like the first few mm -hmm. months of being in any new role, it's amazing. It's exciting. You're learning new stuff. You're figuring stuff out. And then you start to hit a little bit of a wall typically, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess for yourself, you know, like kind of getting past that honeymoon phase now and hitting the wall that you may be hitting or, or not at the moment, like what is your outlook on sales? Is it something, you know, you're happy you made the switch to? Is it something you wish you would have thought about a little bit more? Or like maybe just some more clarity there, I think would help a lot of people, um, especially like in our position when we first started out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. In terms of outlook on sales, I know this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. I see it as a career, not just like, you know, something I'll do for now. Um, sales is really fun. <laughs> the culture is really fun, depending on where you go. Yeah, you know, it can be really energetic, energetic and exciting. Um, was was your question like what would be like something? Yeah, I would, sure. Uh -huh. So I would say like obviously yeah. you mentioned you're you're still enjoying sales and and you see yourself wanting to do it for yeah. you know the foreseeable future. Um, I guess question question there as well is like, I'm sure at some point you know you, you get over the honeymoon phase, you start to get mm -hmm. into like the okay, I know that this is my day to day every single day. Right. I know mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to have to do today. I know this one I have to do tomorrow, that sort of thing. I guess, you know, how are you dealing with that? A and then B, have you hit a wall yet? And if so, like, how did you get past that and, and continue to push on versus, oh, I wish I wouldn't have picked this sort of career? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, very good question. Um, I guess I haven't gotten over the honeymoon phase yet. Uh, I'm relatively new to my role, so there's a lot more to learn. Uh, I guess when you hit the wall, and I don't think there's ever a wall in sales, you know, you can always be getting better. There's always, you know, people are doing different things. I feel like that's like the core, like tenant of sales. Like you kind of have to always be experimenting to like get better. You know, you, you can never really be, uh, how do I say it? Like stagnant in what you do. If they're, if you're not the number one BDR, the number one AE, they someone's doing something better than you right and like until you become that number one then then maybe it's like oh i've hit a wall like how how do i improve myself better from here when there's no one to like learn from but i haven't hit that yet so yeah so i guess kind of multifaceted question here at this point um you know as we start to wrap up one 
you know, one of the biggest things people always have fear about getting into sales is cold calling, right? You're calling people you've never talked to before. It's terrifying for most people, even if you're social, because you're not used to having like adversarial sparring type conversations, right? Because that's how it's going to start. So I guess question to you there, one, um, was it something that, you know, intimidated you at first and, and have you gotten through it and how? And then two, as well, kind of back to what I mentioned, you know, with hitting the wall sort of thing, how have you found ways to, oh, I'm kind of in a slump right now. Here's how I pull myself out. Mm -hmm. Because it's a very up, very up and down game, as you know. So I guess kind oh, of yeah. multi, multifaceted question there, but definitely would like mm -hmm. to have some light shed there. Yeah, I was never intimidated by cold calls. Um, but, you know, cold calls are hard to get right. And I feel like, you know, like before sales, I'm sure lots of people do this. They look at the LinkedIn gurus. They looked at the books, you know, all this junk did like, there's so much bad stuff out there. Like, and it really depends on the vertical. I feel like a lot of sales influencers or people who write about sales, they sell to salespeople, man. Like it's completely different based on the vertical. Like I'm calling into IT guys. They could give less than two whatever's about you know me being like creative or you know me video prospecting or me doing a guitar music song whatever you get me like for me personally nailing cold calling is about understanding the problem like if you do research you read their 10ks you read their case studies you say like hey dude i see this problem in your organization i don't know if i can fix it but i believe other organizations had the similar problem and this is how we help them fix it. Can we have, you know, you know, a short conversation about your priorities, right? That's like the general outline I do now. I don't do any of the whatever, ah, dude, so much random stuff, but you guys know what I'm saying. Did you, um, yeah, out of curiosity, did you try any of yeah. those? Did you like- I did try it. Cover? Yeah. It was pathetic, dude. It was awful, dude. Was, <laughs> I tried, I tried doing the stuff they say, like, you know, and it's like really like permission based, dude. People just don't care, dude. Like they hang up, dude. Like if, yeah. if you're not leading with value, dude, they don't care. Yeah. In my vertical, at least, I can't say I can't speak for like HR, or, you know, sales. Maybe they love that, right? I'm just yeah. talking about for IT, my space. No, um, with you. Yeah. Yeah. But like uh, in terms of slump, uh, could you remind me what you said again? <laughs> yeah. So, so like, yeah. I I'm yeah. sure at some point, you know things start well, things maybe don't start well. Otherwise you catch a little bit of success. That feels great. That feels amazing. And then you inevitably get into a little bit of a slump, whether it's like a week and you have no meetings, two weeks, and you have no meetings, three weeks, whatever. Like a, how do you mentally deal with that? Cause it's very different mm -hmm. from engineering the ups and downs. And then B, how do you pull yourself out of that? Did I definitely feel that cause um, July, this is my first summer, right? In sales, July is super exhausting for me because I'll have the first two weeks I did not book a single meeting I did not have a single good conversation and it was like dial either voicemail or dial like I don't have time for this or dial I'm on PTO right and the way to like really uh really prepare yourself for that mentally because it is draining like we can talk about it all we want but until you like re like experience like not not getting anything it feels like you're not getting anything done for like two weeks, right? That slump. You just have to be like true to like the goals you set for yourself every day. If you're going to say, I'm going to make a certain amount of dials a day, you just have to hit it. If I make a certain amount of emails a day, you have to hit it. There really is no other, well, I mean, I'm new, but there really is no other way for me to like get out of that slump. Just got to know I'm doing the stuff I should be doing. And this is, yeah, a down period, right? But good thing is, I think most orgs measure based on quarterly quota, not monthly. So even if you had like a really bad month, you can still uh, redeem yourself, you know, next month or something. Definitely. Yeah, I think kind of similar shades of what I've talked about with other people as well. Like you have to detach from the outcome and just focus on the, pro like, I hate to say focus on the process, but like just focus on the things you can control, right? It's it's easy to get caught up and use it as an excuse to to push it off and all that. So yeah, very cool. I'm curious, like one thing I always like to ask, maybe in hindsight, given your perspective, is like, for me, I definitely overthought what was going to be involved in like moving to tech sales. I thought it was like this huge quantum leap in my career, right? And like, I was like burning the bridges, um, et cetera. Like, 
whether it was like that or completely different for you, just curious, like if someone's in your situation and, and just for everyone's perspective, correct me if I'm wrong, you graduated college and went straight to tech sales, right? Like you did have mm -hmm. the internships and got a lot of exposure, but straight to tech sales full time. So like if anyone's in that boat thinking through that process, like in any, any thoughts from your own experience and or things you've learned as, as you've gotten into it, gotten comfortable or otherwise? That's a really tough question for me to answer because I never gone back into engineering after tech sales, you know? Um, but I mean, if you want to do tech sales, um, <laughs> go for it. I don't think that many people care that you had a short stint, you know, and really six months enough, six months is enough to understand if you want to do an SDR role or a year old, if you want to be in sales at all, I don't think people would really care if you're like fresh out of high school, did six months in sales and then you want to move back to, I mean, fresh out of college, did six months of sales and want to go back to engineering. Personally, if you're really that tentative about it, if you don't really know if you want to do sales, I'd say just stick with the engineering first because getting to tech sales is not that tough. Truthfully, really like as an SDR, it's, it's not that tough to get into tech sales. Yep. I think well said, yeah. like definitely anyone with the engineering background, if, if they're doing their research and understanding what tech sales actually is to your point, not the uh, LinkedIn influencer dream of what tech sales is. Uh, yeah, no, no, I, I think very well said. And yeah, to your point, I, I think like other takeaways being like, if you're really on the fence about it, maybe don't do it. And or to your point, conversely, should not overthink trying it if you don't like it. No one's going to be too upset that you tried it. And I think if anything, they'll be like, well, cool. Like you kind of got to see a different side of the engineering world. And now you're coming in as an engineer with more perspective. So yeah, especially if you're early in your career, I think very well said and, and some good perspective. So I have one thing um, because I feel like a lot of people who probably um, come to you guys like are just getting into tech sales. And I feel like if you want to get into tech sales, the easiest way is to bring the sales process to, you know, applying to jobs. Um, one thing I wish I did instead of just, you know, like uh, whatever, submitting my resume into the portal or like submitting my resume somewhere, um, get a copy of sales nav. <laughs> Look up like the company you want to work for that's hiring. Look up their hiring managers. You know, free trial Zoom info. Cold, cold call them or cold email them or something like that, you know. Just like bring the sales process to actually looking for a job. I feel like you nail in like a week or something. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. Not only the, I, I candidly, that's even more depth than I went. So more power to you on like the free trial of Zoom info. But yeah, I'd say like maybe 20% of people are actually even taking time to message HR and or hiring managers. And out mm -hmm. of those 20%, 80% of those are doing what they see LinkedIn influencers do, LinkedIn influencers do for messaging, and it's terrible. So yeah, it's like you just put in the work um, and actually make a concise, meaningful, valuable message like, hey, I'm, you know, whether it's touching on your engineering background or talking about why you want to work for them specifically. Yeah, really, really well said. So awesome. Um, I think I'm good. Anything else on either side? I'm good, man. Sweet. Uh, can't thank you enough, Bowen. Really great perspective and always great to see uh, engineers doing well in tech sales. So appreciate everyone who watched and we will see you next time.